Okay. So we have established the concept of price elasticity of demand. Yeah? Um, we said it shows the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. And we've also looked at some of the factors that affect it. So the question is, what use is it? And let's have a think about you know, why it might be useful to a firm, to, to a business. Now, in principle, price elasticity demand could be quite useful um, to a firm or, or to a business. Yeah? Um, suppose that you knew that, suppose a firm or a business knew, um, and we'll, we'll take it for now that it does know, that demand is price elastic. There are implications for you now. Yeah? There are implications for this firm of knowing that demand is price elastic. Because what that means is that if it changes its price, it's going to cause a more than proportional change in demand. So the question is, under those circumstances, what should you do? What should you do as a business? What, what should we do um, if that's the case? Um, and the answer is, if you were to increase price by 10%, if you put price up by 10%, then that's going to lead to more than 10% of your customers leaving. You, can't, you increase price by 10%. Suppose that price elasticity demand is minus two. You increase price by 10%, what's going to happen is that your sales are going to fall by 20%. And the result of that is your revenue is going to go down. Let's use a numerical example to see. Yeah, suppose that price was £10 yeah, um, and demand initially was 100 units. Then initially, revenue is £1,000. Suppose the firm puts its price up to £11, a 10% increase. What's going to happen is that demand is going to fall to 80, 80 £11s, £880. Yeah? What's happened is that revenue has gone down. If, on the other hand, the firm had cut price to £9, similarly a 10%, in this case a 10% fall in demand, what would have happened is that demand would have gone up to 120, a 10% fall in price leads to a 20% increase in demand, yeah? um, and as a result, revenue would have risen for the form, firm to £1,080. Now, obviously, cutting price to £9 has risks, yeah, because um, whether you actually make any more profit will depend on you know, what your cost structure is. You know, it's not a very good idea if it costs you £9.50 to make each unit. But nevertheless, yeah, um, it's going to be probably better to cut price than to increase it. And we can show this quite clearly um, diagrammatically. So there's a relatively elastic demand curve. We can see it's elastic because most of the demand curve is over here. So we're therefore in the top half of the demand curve, which makes it elastic. Um, so there's £10. There's 100 units. We cut price to £9. Quantity has gone up, well, in my case, probably more than more than uh, more than 20%. You know, it looks like it's gone up to, yeah, you know, it looks like it's gone up to um, 140, and um, which would mean that price elasticity demand was minus four, in fact. But what you can see yeah, um, is that, yeah, um, if we if we look at if we look at what we've got off the diagram, what we've got is originally price is 10 pounds times 100 is a thousand pounds. Subsequently. Price falls to nine pounds. Demand rises more than proportionally to 140 units, yeah, um, and that's giving you um, 1,300. Uh, sorry, 1,260 pounds. Um, so you can also show that in area, if you like. Yeah, the area originally there was the area price times quantity. So that area there was the firm's revenue originally, and what's happened as a result of um, what's happened as a result of the um, as a result of the change in price, yeah, um, is that price is now nine pounds. Quantity's gone up to one hundred and forty. Yeah, so total revenue, total revenue.
now that area. Effectively, the firm has lost that area by cutting price from 10 to nine pounds. So on the original 100 units, it's lost a pound on each of those, but it has gained 40 units at nine pounds each, yeah? And so effectively, it's gained 40 times nine, which is 360. It's lost one times 100, which is 100, and that's why revenue's gone up now um, to um, by, by 260 pounds. Um, we can show the same thing for demand being price inelastic. So if we know that um, if we know that demand is price inelastic, yeah, um, we know now that demand is going to change less than proportionally. Consumers aren't very sensitive to a change in price; they don't really care. Um, under which circumstances um, we might as well rip them off. So if we if we increase price when demand is price inelastic, what we're going to see is that demand is going to change less than proportionally. So I've picked the inelastic part of the demand curve. Most of the demand curve is up here, the elastic part up near the top. Yeah, this is the relatively inelastic part. So price is £10 originally and demand is 100 units. It's never a bad starting position because it's easy to times 10 by 100. Um, and if we then increase price to £20, we'll make a nice significant increase that's a nice round, num round number, yeah? then we've increased price by 100%. But on the diagram, that looks more like about 90. Yeah, demand's fallen to about 90. Demand's only fallen by 10%. Price elasticity demand is clearly very inelastic. Um, it's about 0.1 um, because the change in demand was only 10%, the change in price was 100%. But what we can see is that revenue has changed to £1,800. So revenue has clearly risen. Um, and you can see that again, I'm um, doing it, you know, doing it with the areas again. Originally, the firm £10 times 100 units. After Twenty times 90, 1800 pounds. The firms have lost a small amount of. Um, the firms have lost a small amount of revenue. The firm has lost a small amount of revenue yeah, by losing sales. Yeah, but it has gained a significant amount by selling the original units for a far higher price. So therefore, price elasticity demand can be useful um, to a business. It can be useful to a firm. But it's worth bearing in mind yeah, that. It's unlikely that the firm is going to have a very clear idea of what price elasticity demand is. Yeah, I mean, firms don't normally just mess around with their prices for fun. At best, they're going to have it from historical data. Well, that tells you what price elasticity demand was, not what it is today. And as we said, the very act of changing prices yeah, um, actually changes the value for price elasticity demand. In reality, this is a very difficult you know, concept for a firm to use, because the likelihood is that price elasticity demand is going to vary from day to day, yeah, or, or even from hour to hour. Yeah, if you think about it, the demand for sandwiches yeah, is probably far more inelastic at lunchtime than it is at half past four in the afternoon. So in theory, it's quite a useful concept. In reality, you can't use it quite as precisely um, as we are doing here.